because it's all computer generated. All right, but we get on it. It's third gear. So I don't, I don't know if you guys heard that, but it starts to break up at that same RPM every time. So my other alternative is it might be the fuel pump uh, not being able to keep up. So fortunately, when I ordered my crank position sensor, I also ordered a new fuel pump, a new wall grow. So go ahead and get that swapped in and see if that makes a difference. Of course, the one that's in this car is new as well. So I don't think that's it. I guess I do want to show you something. So obviously it's the next day. Um, you notice that my shift boot is off and that is because last night I did a little spirited pull and as I go to shift from third um, into fourth I notice that I have nothing like there's no tension there there's nothing there there's no real noise uh, being made and take that off um, it's not making any sort of noise like it's engaging I can't even move the shifter over the second so of course my fears were at first uh, so of course my fears were at first that I like broke something like major in the transmission. Um, right now there's no resistance and I can't go into any gear for that matter. Uh, so I actually ended up, you know, again, limping the car home once again. Um, it was stuck in third gear. And what I was kind of thinking at first was that I broke the shifter cables, uh, which of course those are a pain in the ass to replace, but I do have an extra set. Like, and of course I didn't film this last night just because I was a little pissed because uh, you know, the thing keeps breaking with having the issue with it breaking up. Um, so I got some new spark plugs and as well as a new fuel pump. I'm gonna try to replace those as well. Uh, but this is what it's like to have a project car, especially something like this, that is majorly, uh, like for the most part, untested. There's been very few uh, people who have built these cars, at least for, for the same application. Um, not a whole lot of R&D, so we're stuck trying to figure things out. So hopefully you guys can learn from my experience once this whole thing is said and done um, and not make a lot of those same mistakes and not have the same downtime. Unfortunately, the problem wasn't the shifter. Once I took the cables off, I was able to move the shifter freely. I did pull it out just to inspect it but it appears to be in good shape the cables aren't broken either so that means my issue is going to be with the transmission itself so i did go ahead uh go to the storage to grab my spare transmission so like i said guys i'm not going to show you a whole lot about how to remove the transmission because i've already done it a couple times so you can check those videos out but what i am going to do also is replace some parts that i've had for a while now so i bought the, all these uh mood components to replace what's in here um, I've had these for a few months actually I've had them since I installed the since I installed the coilovers in the first place and I've just been putting them off so I have uh, some new end links and whatnot in this box so I'm gonna go ahead and replace them so to replace the one that's attached to the strut all you have to do is remove that nut there on the bottom that one there and that'll come right out so you need to take those off and it's a should be a direct swap all right guys so I got them off um, as you can see these are the old ones and uh, these are the new ones of course these are Moog inlinks as well, if you guys can make that out. But I'm not sure how long these have been in the car and if that didn't tell you. Um, whereas on this one, the boot looks a little bit different. It looks like it's more of a captive design. So hopefully these last, um, they still have the greasable fittings on them just like these. So I'm assuming that these are just an older design and this is a newer one. So I'm going to go ahead and get these greased up and get them installed. So I got the new piece in. It's looking good. Um, I did want to point out one other thing. So I was looking at this piece here, and it still, it appears to still be in good shape, but you can definitely tell, um, you can definitely see some areas where the rubber is starting to crack. So these will probably need to be replaced here soon. But there's really two parts of your tie rod. You got the outer and then the inner. You can tell if you need to replace your inner tie rod if it just goes like that. The inner tie rod is bad as well because it should just hold its own position out here. Uh, so I think I will add that to the list. I think the bath. All right, guys. So something else I'm working on is installing these extended wheel studs. Um, I went ahead and went with ARP. Of course, hopefully you saw my video. But the reason I need to install these extended wheel studs is because I did install the uh, JDM fender flares on the car in order to get the look that I'm going for with my tire setup. Now I had to add a small spacer. Now this spacer is just 12 millimeters, uh, which isn't all that big, but it is enough to where my factory studs um, aren't long enough and you can't bolt the wheel down. So you can see, here's a factory stud 
it is about half the length of these ARP extended studs. To uninstall them, all I did was just take my, my mallet and hit them. Just get one good hit on them. They'll come right out. Uh, you do need to be careful with that because you can damage the wheel bearing by hitting them too much. So like, so there's a couple ways you can go about installing these. One, uh, probably the least advised is you just get a mallet and hit them from the back side. I wouldn't recommend that. One, like I said, you can damage the wheel bearing. But two, um, it's kind of hard to get a straight shot on them. Um, this is really the only area you have, so I wouldn't agree with that. Uh, but they make a tool. Um, here's an example of one here. It's by OEM Tools, a wheel stud installer. And I know I didn't show it, but to install the studs is real simple. Um, so you remove the caliper and the bracket and just slide the studs back in from the back side and then you just spin it until you can get all of them in. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my rotor back on because this is going to act like a spacer. And I say that because what this is, this stud installer, is really itself just a big spacer, which is why you can use washers as well and save yourself, uh, you know, 20 bucks. But we're just going to slide this over the stud. And then we're going to tighten a nut down on it. Now what I did, um, I took one of my lugs, of course these were cheap old lugs as I mentioned, is cut the top off one of them. Effectively making this an open end lug. And we're just going to tighten that down onto the stud. And you see when we're doing this, this little black piece is spinning with it. But that should keep the stud from spinning as well. Especially as we tighten it down. So we got it some, pretty much tight. And we're just going to tighten this thing down until it pulls all the way through. Okay, you might want to stick your head back here just to make sure that the stud is flush on the back side. But then that's all that is. So basically, this is going to spin to keep the rest of it from spinning. Like So now we can just go ahead and remove the tool. And then do that nine more times. Like right, So this is what the tool looks like up close. Um, you can see this black piece kind of spins independently of the silver piece. And this is why as you tighten down the lug, uh, this black piece will spin with it. But then on the bottom, the black piece is actually slightly recessed. So the silver piece is planted up against you know the rotor or the hub. And as you tighten it, this spins, which will pull the wheel stud through. All right, so this is the final product. I did have to cut the ends off of all of my lugs just because even with the spacer, which you can kind of see back there, the studs are still too long. So I have some makeshift open end studs. I may get some, some real ones at some point, but it's not really how my priority list, but that's what it looks like once you're done. All right guys, so that's all I got for you today. I wanna to thank you for watching. And if you're wondering why this video was a little bit different than my other videos, it's because uh, this clip here is actually filmed quite a bit later than the rest of it. I'm trying to get my videos caught back up. Um, I've still been working on the car, I've still been filming, I just haven't had time to edit. So this is my attempt to kind of keep you guys up to speed as well as bring you up to speed on everything that's going on so you guys will be relatively current um, as far as the videos are concerned. But of course, if you haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Have a great day.